Let's take a look at the first page of your screenplay for the last showing, the page one analysis. Was this an original spec script or a work for hire? Yeah, this is the original spec, uh, the script. And just one of those ideas I had based on a experience I had of being locked in a multiplex cinema and realizing how eerie and strange and how brilliant it would be to set a horror film in there. I didn't really set out to make a horror film and the opening was originally very, very different. Um, but um, yeah, but in the shooting script, obviously it's, it's, uh, it's very different to what I originally wrote in one of the early drafts. How was the opening different in, in the earlier draft? It was actually some sales feedback um, that I wanted to make a film that started in the cinema and ended in the cinema and that's it. There was no outside world. There was no real backstory. There was no, you know, I wanted you to feel trapped and part of that, that your whole world of the film was that multiplex cinema. And I kind of stuck to my guns for quite a long time with that. And actually it was a, the sales agent that said, well, for the trailer, can we have some shots of them walking in London, past London Bridge, because it helps the trailer look good. It makes it feel like it's a higher budget. And I was a bit like, come on, is that really what we're going to do? Like, I understand like how on the trailer you want to make it to look big and expensive and have scale. But I was hoping that, and this obviously before I shot the film, so they hadn't visualized kind of how cinematic the film, the inside of the cinema was going to be. So I think they were nervous about um, only having the film set in the cinema. So instead of just writing that scene, I thought, actually, this is a really good opportunity to tell some visual storytelling and establish these two very or three very different characters and their and very different experiences that help set up the film in probably in a way that actually works better than I originally intended um it, it allowed me to cut some of the exposition out of maybe dialogue later on and tell it more visually because i let go of that little idea of only being in the cinema and 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 it actually opened up a few opportunities to tell a story that um put these two worlds these two very different worlds at odds with each other and kind of have fun with the contrast of that um because you have this um uh, pro uh, projectionist character that's very careful, very meticulous, very much about detail, very much about control. And it's, you know, the film is about, you know, one, you know, one of the things is about a comment on the change in multiplex cinemas, how things have become digital and, and how the art of projection, you know, um, of projecting film has been lost for, you know, DCPs and that a lot of these lifelong projectionists that have done it and their fathers have done it and their father's fathers have done it you know suddenly they're ex you know they're made extinct you know um and that's for to put your life's work into something and then have it taken away from you in a very unfair way um what this new opening allowed you to see that descend you know and let see him lose the control that he has in his world of the projectionist booth and then be retrained by a young person on a till and be forced to wear a silly hat and a you know and be basically degraded um uh, as a character um to kind of set up why he does the things he does in the film and to contrast that was i wanted there to be a real connection between are two uh, younger characters because they're, you know, they're dating. There needs to be emotional stakes between them in terms of he needs to really be into her in order to do the things that he does. So it was, it was a good opportunity to do, see how they first met and um, tell a kind of a little love story, uh, maybe more like a commercial would, you know, without dialogue um, in a more visual way to kind of, help set up how they met and where we find them, you know, when the film begins. And then also have fun with the fact that, um, you know, I knew at this point it was going to be Freddy Krueger. So, um, you know, and, and it was a psychological thriller. So we could, we could have a Halloween party and have, 
and and play with the expectations of what horror characters are and 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 stuff as a little nod to the audience of like I know we have a horror legend. It kind of it you know it, it's sort of like breaking the ice. I don't know somewhat, um, but also just having fun with that status he has as a kind of horror legend. So I turned what actually was a really silly sales note into uh, something that I actually think made the film better. And I'm actually really proud of the opening of the film because uh, I think there's no dialogue for like five minutes or something. Um, so um, so the visual side of me it obviously enjoyed doing that. You cut back and forth between locations seven times on the first page. Now, can you talk about the pacing of the opening? Yeah, I. Um, it was a funny one because as someone that really likes white space, um, it's quite a dense first page. Um, and I, I tried to be economical. Um, and I mean, I wrote this, you know, a number of years ago now. So I feel like I've, whether I'd, I'd maybe write it differently um, now, just to be um, more, again, more, maybe more about the visual flow as opposed to the kind of shooting script order of what it is. But Again, it, you know, that first page is is trying to set up the film, set up the characters and and that contrast between locations. So we have the, you know, splicing a film and the art and the beauty of lacing up a film and projection with kids getting drunk, vomiting over balconies, partying, you know, these and you know these worlds are going to collide at some point. Um, and that's what the intercutting is doing, um, is to kind of set that montage up. It, it's one of those that's maybe more frustrating on the page because it feels a little bit dense because you're having to change headers a lot. Which actually, actually, when you see it, when it's shot, which is actually all slow-mo and with music, and it, it's, 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 it, there's, there's, it flows a lot more visually than it would on a page. Um, so I think that's always a frustration, personally, to try and alleviate the kind of the headers and the, the and the the backbone of scripts that can sometimes get in the way of the flow. What are the big questions we as an audience would have after reading the first page? I think you would want to know, or I would hope you would want to know. Um, well, firstly, that these these are two different types of people. You know, not only from age, but in terms of outlook, in terms of experience, you know, and hopefully there's a tension in that juxtaposition of like, how are these things going to come together? How are these things going to intertwine? And when they do intertwine, we know not quite sure how, why or when they're going to meet. But when they do meet, we've got all of this history, you know. Um, that is coming, whether that only takes your page or five pages, you know, that there's, um, as an audience, you've been giving this information and that hopefully makes that first meeting uh, weighty and dramatic, even if they're not, which actually, when they eventually they meet, they're ordering popcorn. <laughs> you know, it's, uh, it's not actually that, feeling that tense on the page if you started with that, but because you know where they came from, Hopefully you're colliding these worlds, these kind of different characters together. So I hope that that comes across um, from the first page. And then just, you know, playing with the contrast of the art of lacing film in a projector. It's very beautiful to watch and it's and very skillful and very delicate and very, you know, and, and quite and very technical with, you know, me a very messy, carefree, young generation that doesn't care about that. You know, that doesn't care about the detail, that doesn't care about the art form. They just want to press play, you know, um, and they don't really care if it's 35 mil or 70 mil or anything like that. They just want it to, to start already, you know. So uh, it's kind of hopefully setting up that feeling as well. In the next action, we meet Stuart Lloyd, and this could be our protagonist. And the only description that we have of him is that he's 53 years old and we don't see his face. Why no further description for Stuart? I felt that, first actually thinking back, I'm probably I'm quite surprised by the fact there's no more description. Um, 
maybe I would now if I wrote it, but I think maybe at the time I was trying to um, give the impression that what his job or what he was doing was kind of more important then about how we how he was described or what he felt about it was kind of maybe felt like real estate on the page that I could do without because what he was doing was more important and the way he was doing it said more about him as opposed to what he was wearing or whether he had a moustache or you know or like he reminded you of x you know um I think uh I think that was prob probably what I was getting at when it was when I was writing it what was the overall atmosphere you were looking to build on the first page? I think the overall atmosphere was probably intrigue. I just wanted people to be intrigued by maybe firstly seeing something that maybe a lot of people don't see, you know, like lacing projectors and the whole um, art and care and attention that goes into you watching a film because no, you know, the whole, one of the whole points of the film is no one ever really looks behind them. No one looks up, and obviously it's a horror trope, look behind you. But like, you know, no one looks up at that projectionist booth and thinks, there's a person in there that has laced this film, that is watching this film, that has checked the film, that knows, that cares about turning down the lighting and, you know, and the sound and, and is there as the quality control so you can have the experience and not have to worry about that anymore. Um, and that's now gone. In most, you know, theatres, multiplexes, that's now gone. Um... So, if, so it was nice to um, capture that. And, and funny enough, just as a little side note, we, the cinema we'd be shooting in, in the time it took for us to recce it and then shoot the film, got rid of all of its 35mm projectors. So this was all happening as we were filming it. Um, so we had to go somewhere else to shoot that, which had one. So, like, it's just art imitating life, imitating art a little bit uh, in, in, that, in that kind of thing. So, yeah, I want the intrigue and also to um, maybe set up two stalls for um, the audience to relate to uh, either Stuart as the projectionist or to the younger characters um, as, you know, and, and whether that's age or experience or whether you like them or don't like them you know um it would probably be a sweeping generalization to say well older people will relate to Stuart and younger people will relate to them right but it was the idea that there's something in this film for everybody um and also the idea that you don't quite know who the bad guy is yet you know you don't quite know who it is and that's a big part of the film is the idea that the film comments on um what is a protagonist and what is an antagonist and and as the and the power of a filmmaker you have to edit things and change things and manipulate things to make someone whose intentions are good seem bad which is exactly what Stuart does to the Martin character in the film um while he's making his film you know he turns his good intentions into being the bad guy because he ultimately wants to become the hero of his own story even though the audience knows he's the bad guy but because we've set the film up like this we understand why okay we may not agree with what he's doing but we understand why he's been pushed over the edge um so uh, that's obviously a lot from the first page but hopefully that's what this is all building towards this is all setting up for the audience just as a side note, do you go into Stuart's backstory at all or no? You just set him in that time and place and then we find out the reasons why he feels sort of obsolete. Yeah, I mean, he comments later on the, about the change. of He becomes the kind of mouthpiece for projectionists uh, or kind of not all projectionists are, are murderers. But like, <laughs> but um, he, he he comments on like the state of horror, for example, and w w I had a lot of fun writing and directing that scene, knowing that a horror icon was saying like, kids these days don't know what horror is. It's all about gore. It's all about sex. It's all about violence. You know, in in his day, it was about what you didn't see, and everyone's like, ha ha, it's Freddy Krueger talking about Nightmare on Elm Street versus a saw. You know, uh, so it's kind of a is a fun thing for an audience, you know, um, hopefully not, not enough to take them out of it, but also what the film is actually about, you know, is about a comment on horror and a comment on cinema. Um, 
so that that was fun fun to write but that comes later on in the film and this is the only real backstory we get which is very visual about him why he loses his job what he has to do uh it's very demeaning i mean i think on page two he's sweeping out the um cinema and he finds a used condom uh, uh, between the seats and it's disgusting and we shot it and it's horrible um and it's like the lowest of the low but again it's about the lack of respect for cinema for his art it's like if you're finding a used condom in a cinema nobody's caring about the, the time and attention you know he's putting into the projection of the film so it, it was kind of fun again very visual shorthand to try and get that feeling across. How do you feel about the amount of mystery and intrigue on page one? I think there's a good amount of um, mystery and intrigue. I mean, that's hopefully my intention. I think there's definitely intrigue when you watch it because it's all shot in a kind of slightly ethereal, maybe slightly creepy kind of way. It's, you know, it's all kind of tracking slow-mo shots. It's all about extended moments. It feels like slices of time kind of extended out longer than they should be. Uh, and it's trying to set up that kind of maybe more, maybe more that kind of psychological pacing um, that that's kind of to come. Um, so I hope there's a good amount of intrigue that makes you turn the page. Um, based on what the characters are doing um, and what you might see. And for that same reason of like wondering how these worlds collide, you know, if you haven't seen the trail, obviously, if you're coming into this clean, you know, you're like, well, how, how, how do these two worlds come together? You know? Looking back on it now, were there any mistakes you feel you made with page one? I would say I was surprised maybe how dense it was um, based on I think I probably got more confident as a writer um, in terms of, uh, and I, it's it's a shooting script, you know, we're looking at. So obviously you've got the headers and the um, more drawn out, but I think I may have written it um, in that way from the off. Whereas I think now I would do very simple headers I probably wouldn't say interior, exterior. I'd probably just say, you know, cinema or seating or, you know, something that kind of helps that intrigue more, that makes you work a little bit harder and draws you in a little bit more than... I, I really... I find that, um, you know, exterior, cinema, projectionist booth, night, it's just so... It's a drag to read, you know, on a page. And I think we can get very caught up in thinking that we need that stuff when actually we really don't, especially in a first, like in a non-shooting script draft. You know, I would say that you just strip all that back and just have the, the, the essential information that you need. People know if something is interior or exterior. And if you don't, you know, from what the scene is, you know, like it's, if it's unclear, then... I'm trying to think of an example where it wouldn't be clear, but, um, you know, people have a very, people are very astute, you know, reading scripts. People have a very good visual eye. So I, I would probably try and make it a bit cleaner maybe now. Um, maybe less words. <laughs> um, but uh, certainly things I'm writing at the moment, you know, I'm, I'm having like, it's like alien style where it's like two words, line break, four words, line break. You know, you just kind of, you just go with it and it's actually a lot more fun to to write you know feels a little bit more poetic in a way 